anyone can read it, like say the SSH server. Uh, if you don't let the server read the file, it can't read the file. Uh, however, you don't want anybody but you able to write to it. Uh, transfer it with a protocol like SCP or SFTP. Do not copy and paste your private key. It's a very long line. Um, and most of us, uh, yes, we may be able to configure firewalls and databases and whatnot, but shockingly often we cannot copy and paste a long line of random gibberish to save our own life. Uh, have the machine copy it for you. I've used BI and copy and paste quite successfully. <laughs> yes, you do, I'm sure. I'm, I'm not going to argue with anyone who insists they can do it, but sometime when you put your SSH public key on a server and it doesn't work, I'm in, in advance saying, I told you so. There's also a little program contributed with OpenSSH that uh, some versions of Unix install by default SSH copy ID that will go and append it to your authorized key file on the server for you. Is there a version of that for PuTTY? Because PuTTY's no. public key format is stupid. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, in addition to the permissions, is it also important that the owner of the file be certain? A specific owner? The owner of the... Well, theoretically, you should own the key file in your directory okay. if the system administrator does not want users editing their own key files. Uh, he can tell SSHD to look for key files elsewhere. For example, on my network, um, I distribute all public key files to all servers. We use Ansible, copying this everywhere is a quick and easy task. Because I am not messing around with users not being able to log into a machine because their key isn't installed. Users cannot track this. I'm sorry, they just can't. So all of my key files are in Etsy SSH authorized keys slash uh, username. And I maintain that. That also keeps intruders from adding their own key files in the user's home directory. So creating a key pair with OpenSSH. Go into your .ssh directory in your home directory, and there's this cryptic command called ssh-keygen. Um, don't use any arguments, just, and let it walk you through. Uh, it will ask you for a file name, take the default. It'll ask you for a passphrase, give it a passphrase. It'll ask you to type the same passphrase again to make sure you can type it twice in a row. Uh, if you can't type your passphrase twice in a row, more than once or twice, maybe you should use a different passphrase. Um, it'll tell you where the key is, where the public key is, and what the key fingerprint is, which you, you won't do much with it, but once you have this, once you've copied the public key to the server, you can uh, SSH to your server. SSH will prompt you for the passphrase, and you're in. So the open SSH agent, so you don't have to keep typing the passphrase. I'm sorry. Make sure that your key-based authentication works without an agent. Just that you have installed your file correctly and that everything works back and forth. You may have, say, I I've more than once encountered a sysadmin who disabled public key authentication because it meant you didn't have to type a password. Yes, sir. Okay, so I've used this program and I'm still kind of confused by it. Okay. SSH keygen, I create a key, I've got a key on my 
machine. Yes. That means that I can share this key from another machine and you, the kit you, to my machine? No. You take the .pub file on your machine. You upload it to the server in the .ssh authorized keys file. Um, that key, that your .pub file is actually one line. It's a very long line that wraps around repeatedly. You take that one line and you get it in the authorized keys file in your account on the server, and then it will work. And then I just SSH? From your desktop to this remote server. And it'll just use that key? I don't need it to just use uses the key. It says, do you have a key? Why, yes, I do. Uh, essentially, the dialogue works like this. Um, SSH says, hi, uh, I'd like to connect to you. Server says, sure, I support public key authentication. Public key authentication? I have a public key. Let me decrypt it and see if it matches what you have. Dear user, can you decrypt this for me? Thank you. Does this key match? Why, yes, it does. Come on in. That's, that's how it works. If you want other people to be able to use, or other machines to be able to use that key to connect to your machine, um, you would have to move the, see, the private key around. I'm going to tell you not to do that. For every machine that you SSH out of, that, that you consider a desktop, make a separate key pair for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the more you spread that public, that private key around, the more likely that key will get stolen. Uh, two, if one of your keys gets stolen, you have a lot of other machines with their own keys to recover <coughs> your servers from. You can log into your servers quickly and remove that, that stolen key. And three, um, when the machine dies, the key dies with it. Which means, uh, how many of you keep a desktop longer than five years? Okay. Um, generally speaking, within five years, you should generate another private key with the newest software, with the currently recommended bit lengths. So, for me, when I throw my laptops, uh, I'm delighted if they last 18 months, because I'm a big clumsy bastard. <laughs> um, that means that the key is associated with this machine is automatically revoked. Uh, when I get the new machine and I generate a new key and I distribute it everywhere. Thank you. Ten minutes. Does that help? It does. So if you disable password login, you're using key-based login. Yes. So when you create, you go to the second or third machine, you create a new public and private key. Yes. So you have to first copy it to a machine that can access it? Yes, you do. And then transfer it over. Yes. You have to get the public key to the server through a machine that can get the public key. Yes. Just out of curiosity, using the same passphrase for those several machines? Yes. Yes, I do use the same passphrase across several machines. And if anyone can guess the paragraph of text that I use, um, that's OK. Now, should they all be different? Yes. If I only had two desktops, they would be different. Um, well, I understand. I'm yes. Just, I was just curious. No, no. Um, I go through every three years or so and say, fine, I'll change the passphrase. And I spend a couple hours generating keys and push them out via Ansible, and life is fun. So you're just saying pushing out your key, I assume your, your public keys. My public so keys. So if you're. I also want to know if SCP and SFTP using the same concepts, right? Yes. So we generate a key, we use some tool like you're just talking about to push that out to the public. Well, I have hundreds of servers 
So I, I use Ansible, which is something kind of like Puppet or Chef or what have you. Um, and I use that to say, okay, send my new authorized key file to all machines. And then it goes. Um, but if I only had a couple servers, then yes, I would use SCP or SFTP. So, using the OpenSSH agent, the, the point of this, since we have 10 minutes, I'm going to make it quick. There's a way for it to run in the background of your desktop so that when you type SSH whatever, your desktop just picks it up. Uh, depends entirely on how you start your desktop. Okay, Putty uses a program called PuttyGen. It's a very standard Windows GUI. Start. Click Generate. Um, you want at least 1024 bits unless you're using SSH on a VAX. Save the key you generate and then select Conversion Export Open SSH Key. If you don't export the key to Open SSH format, uh, it won't work. So the VAX is because it's an older machine, it doesn't have the current? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, if you have... VAX users? <laughs> I own a Vax, it's not on, but it's I own it. Uh, I, I just finished the OpenBSD book, which runs on Vax, and I haven't bothered to turn it off. So, again, using that key that you've uploaded to the server, this theory is all the same. But, start with connection, SSH, authentication. Give it the path to your private key. Copy this key onto the server. Log in. You should be prompted for the passphrase. If that works and you get in, you're great. If you're going to use an agent, don't save that session. Instead, Pageant is the SSH agent uh, for Windows. Right click, select the key you want, Enter the passphrase. Enter the passphrase again. Eventually you will type it correctly. Um, SSH to the server. Each session though you have to uh, check use pageant. So I save that as a default on most of my saved putty sessions. Uh, you can have pageant start when you boot the laptop. Which is uh, it's in the startup folder. Okay. Key file management. Uh, I already said much of this, but one key per client machine. Back up your private keys to offline media. If you have only one key, and you use that key to access all of your machines, and that's the only way into your machines, you better be able to recover that private key when your disk lets out the magic black smoke. Why should each machine have a different private key? I mean, I use the same private key on a couple of different machines. If one machine is compromised, um, then all of your SSH connections are similarly compromised. They have your private key. And this means... But they don't they, have the phrase. They, they Do they or don't they? They don't. Um, I would assume they do. I, I would, if someone has your private key, I would assume that they used a program like Watch or uh, I think Snoop also. Well, there are ways to capture text that someone is typing. That a user is typing in a terminal session that they own. If you're logged in as Matt and the intruder is logged in as Matt, he owns your terminal. He owns the socket to your SSH agent. Uh, you have to assume that key is compromised. <laughs> so, once, it, once you have this working, go in. Password authentication, no. Public authentication, yes. Uh, sorry, SSHD config. Um, use PAM, yes or no, there are pluses or minuses to that. Yes, Jim? Uh, 
really quick. What does challenge response authentication really mean? Yeah, I, I've never used it. Most of us don't. Um, I would have to go to the book I wrote and look it up. <laughs> I'm very sorry. You just point me, Mike. <laughs> as, as I recall, I looked at it and said, wow, that's stupid. And <laughs> wrote it down and went on. But I'm sure someone somewhere is using it. Five minutes, excellent. SSHD will also let you selectively map, allow passwords from certain subnets. If you have a Unix box in the office that everybody needs to log into, and you have staff members, <coughs> sales, who <laughs> just don't get it. Uh, personally, I've spun up a small virtual machine or jail. Let them log into that to use the app. Allow logins via password from the special DMZ that I have for just those people. Um, the special network? <laughs> it's a very special network with very special filtering. <laughs> because all those people want is port 80 and port 443. And, and if they have outbound access on any other ports, it will not be pretty. So, um, yeah, there, there are special VLANs just for those users. Um, and the rest of us will behave like grown-ups. So, agent forwarding, we, we touched on that already. Do you trust root on your machine? Do you? Okay, enabling forwarding, you have to set it on the server in the client. Okay, that's it. We have about three minutes for questions, so very quickly, uh, my accountant says, I should say, please buy my books. This makes PenguinCon deductible. Um, if you are here and attended this, you can get a, a, my SSH book is part of a three book bundle on my website. Use the coupon code POPTARTS and you get them all for 20 bucks. Now, we didn't have time to correct the known flaws, but we had time to add this code at the end of the... This is money. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he gives the same uh, code to all his other uh, <laughs> Hush. <laughs> so, are there any questions? Yes, Jim. My environment, I have to send back and forth a lot of encrypted data. Yes. But we prefer to use SFTP to do so. Yes. Is there a way to automate? SSH, SFTP, with passphrases. With passphrases only using commercial SSH. And using commercial SSH, the manual comes with a big warning that says, this is stupid. My advice if you have to transfer the data back and forth is to restrict where the key can be used from and what commands that key may be used for. Four. Um, and that's very doable with OpenSSH. So your keys for hundreds of machines are going to expire at a certain time. You want to roll them, roll out new keys. Is there a way of having dual keys for a while? Oh yes. Any key you add to authorized hosts on its own line will will work. Um, my authorized keys file now, right now, I believe is 12 lines long. Because I have 12 desktop machines. Uh, I believe this makes me a morally bad person. <laughs> Why? Yeah. One, they all have to be patched. Yeah. Um, they all should be patched. <laughs> um, two, some of them are VAXs. Which, uh, the VAX is kind of like the IRS. Uh, how much power do you have? Give it to me. <laughs> um, it's certainly not a green machine. Uh, and it, it has its own special aroma as well, which I think is why a user donated it to me. But, any other questions? I'm oh. intrigued about the, uh, uh, a couple slides back, you did the match on an IP address. 
and allow yes whatever. yes this this slide. Is that for basically any line in the SSHD config? Most. Now so there, I can do a match address foo and allow groups. There are, yes, allow groups. Um, and I'm out of time, I believe. But I love you because. <laughs> <laughs> solves a problem. Um, I would tell you to either go to the website and buy the book or meet me outside and. Maybe I should I just read deal. the book because I already own it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last, you all ask questions, so I'll ask one. Why are you here? <laughs> I love you. Oh, okay. Thank you.